this service of worship, this uh, wonderful occasion, Terry and Eleanor's wedding. It is a service of worship in the Anglican tradition. One thing I'd like to uh, ask you is to turn off your phone if you haven't already done that, which I suspect you have, but just make sure that would be lovely. Uh, following this service, there's a reception downstairs. You're all invited downstairs for that. Before that meal, at the end of the service, toward the end of the service, we have another meal, the Lord's Supper, a Holy Communion. All who would like to join in are welcome. Uh, we will bring the bread. I'll have the bread in the center. Terry will have the chalice here. Uh, Eleanor will have individual glasses over there. So if you'd like to receive, please just come forward down the center aisle, chalice and back to your place, or small glass and back to your place. And it's okay to, to change sides if you'd prefer one and you're sitting on this side or the other way around. Uh, so um, all are welcome who desire to be closer to Christ. You don't need an Anglican ID card. All you need is a desire to receive the Lord's Supper. At this, uh, at this parish, in this church, in this cathedral, every Sunday or every gathering we have, we are uh, glad to share an acknowledgement. We worship and live gratefully on Treaty 1 land, the traditional territory of the Ininu, the Anishinaabe, and the Dakota, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We give thanks also for our water, shared with us by the people of Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. We are all treaty people. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. Dear friends, we have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Eleanor and Terence and to rejoice with them. Marriage is a gift of God and a means of God's grace in which a man and a woman become one flesh. It is God's purpose that, as husband and wife, 
give themselves to each other in love, they shall grow together and be united in that love, as Christ is united with his church. Their union in heart, body, and mind is intended for their mutual comfort and help, that they may know each other with delight and tenderness in acts of love. In marriage, husband and wife give themselves to each other, to care for each other in good times and in bad. They are linked to each other's families, and they begin a new life together in the community. It is a way of life that all should reverence, and none should lightly undertake. If anyone present knows a reason why Eleanor and Terence may not lawfully marry, they must declare it now. Eleanor and Terence have come to enter, oh, sorry, if either of you knows a reason, looks to me we've done this three times, right? <laughs> if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, now. You should really declare it now, but since we've already taken care of that. Eleanor and Terence have come to enter this holy state. They have complied with civil and canon law and have been duly prepared to enter into marriage. They will each give their consent to the other. They will exchange solemn vows, and in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that by God's help, they may fulfill his purpose for the whole of their earthly life together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God our Father, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant to these your servants that loving one another they may continue in your love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the epistle of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of Christ is to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. You guys are pulling very close together. Okay. Lisa. Terry and Eleanor. And all, all of you here, because you care for them. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Now, I have to say, it's not everyone who has the courage to choose this gospel text for their wedding. This beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, kudos to you both. These are the words of Jesus, of course, spoken directly to his disciples and often called the Beatitudes, because in Greek, each of them begins with the word makarios, which can be translated as happy or blessed or blessed or even fortunate, but usually blessed. Now in Latin, the Greek becomes beati, which then becomes beatitude in English. Now you know, Jesus' beatitudes stand, they stand at the head of the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5 through 7 in Matthew. These <coughs> words begin it. Like fabulous carved lions at the entrance of a sanctuary, they are his first public teaching in Matthew's gospel. They send shivers up the spine and mark the line between the sacred and the profane. They are ecstatic, inspired deliberations from the one who reveals the very heart of God. And so they are brimming with the grace of God, God's infinite grace. Come to think of it, that's maybe why he chose them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If, by some chance, there haven't yet been those times in your relationship, yes, even in yours, when you feel poor in spirit, they will come, but take heart, because you are close to Christ, and even better, he is close to you, Yours is the kingdom of heaven, of which we get a foretaste already, certainly, in the meal we will share after a bit, but also, also, the gift of marriage as God intended it to be. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Yes, even to us, sorrow and mourning will come, as you have known already for a long time. Others you love will die, already have. And as you mentioned, one of you will almost certainly die before the other. Even then, the love of God will comfort you. And even in lesser or at least less final sorrow, comfort is there for all of us, for you, as we rely on the living Christ at the center of our relationships. Blessed are the meek. For they will inherit the earth. Ah, yes, meek. Now that's an interesting and often misunderstood, even abused word here. This line is much like the first one. The meek are those who trust in God completely. And the earth might better be translated as the land. Or in the Christian context, again, the kingdom of God 
not limited to a few scared, uh, square kilometers in one little corner of the world. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Righteousness, that's another big churchy word, better understood as right relationship, as being in right relationship first and foremost with God, our creator, right relationship as we are coming to find more and more, thankfully, right relationship with the rest of creation of which we are a part, right relationship with the human community, and certainly right relationship between lovers and friends, between spouses, between wife and husband. And I see that in the two of you all the time. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy, who is a better example of mercy than our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he reveals the inexhaustible mercy in the heart of God. We follow Jesus, we open our hearts and our minds to him, and we are empowered not only to be merciful ourselves, but gifted with the surprise of divine mercy. Now it comes in the mystery of heaven for sure, but not only there. There is enough mercy, more than enough mercy, new every day, <coughs> to love each other in marriage no matter what. And then, and then, to share that mercy with a, a world which is too often merciless. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Pure in heart. Uh -huh. Some silly people might trivialize this and say, well, that gets easier as we get older, right? Nope. Mm -mm. To be pure in heart is to open ourselves, heart and mind, to the mind of Christ, as St. Paul invites us to do in his letter to the Philippians. Let each of you Look not to your own interests, he writes. Let the same mind be in you. Be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Now what perfect advice for a Christian community, but also for the most intimate expression of Christian community between two partners in Christian marriage. It's another dimension of hungering and thirsting for righteousness, a deep desire to be in right relationship, including between two spouses, always drawing strength from the one who is right relationship, who defines it. The closer we are to Christ, the more clearly we will see God, who is defined by love as perfect love, the very source of love. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And how desperately the world needs peacemakers. The Prince of Peace himself calls his disciples to be those peacemakers wherever peace is needed. Now sometimes, of course, it is needed even within marriage. And that's okay. Because Christ is at the heart of your marriage and will provide everything you need. All this is underscored by the promise we receive in baptism where we are proclaimed and named to be beloved children of God, as we are joined to Christ, to his death, and to his resurrection. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you stand faithfully, together, for everything Jesus stood for, as he calls all of us to do, those of us who claim to be his disciples, it's not impossible that you might encounter those who disagree with you. If nobody does, maybe we need to reconsider how we are doing with this whole list. For example, are we being merciful to others all around us, and especially to that one who is closest to us, our beloved to whom we have promised the rest of our lives. Are we in fact hungering and thirsting for right relationship? And not just with each other, 
but with all those around, with the rest of creation, and always with God, our creator. Just how are we doing? Okay, so let me uh, begin to wrap up by sharing with you these profound words of the Lutheran pastor and martyr, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He wrote these words from his prison cell in 1943 in Nazi Germany as part of a marriage sermon for his niece and her husband. God gives you Christ as the foundation of your marriage. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. In a word, he continues, live together in the forgiveness of your sins, for without it no human fellowship, least of all a marriage, can survive. You will shortly, by your own words, marry one another, but the relationship is a gift. It's a gift to be cared for, to be nurtured intentionally, constantly, gently. In your mutual wisdom, you have learned, it appears to me, that the foundation and strength of your relationship is God's love in Christ Jesus, our Lord, which continues and continually makes your love for each other even stronger. At the wedding of then Princess Elizabeth in 1947, Geoffrey Francis Fisher, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, said these words, to the young couple. The ever-living Christ is here to bless you. The nearer you keep to him, the nearer you are to one another. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you, Eleanor and Terry. I invite you to stand. Terence, will you give yourself to Eleanor to be your husband, to love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her, so long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Eleanor, will you give yourself to Terence to be his wife, to love him, comfort him, honor and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, so long as as you both shall live, if so answer, I will. I will. Do you, who are family members of Terence and Eleanor, do you give your blessing to this marriage? If so answer, we do, and make sure that they can hear you. And all of you gathered here today, all of you who are witnesses to these vows now to be made, will you do all in your power to support and uphold this marriage if so, answer, we will. We will. Congregation may be seated. Little bite by little bite. Looking at him. I, Terence, take you, Eleanor. I, Terence, take you, Eleanor. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, until death shall separate us, until death shall separate us, according to God's holy law, according to God's holy law, I will treat you with respect, I will treat you with respect. I now entrust my life. I now entrust my life and my happiness to and you. And my happiness to you. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. I, Eleanor, take you, Terence. I, Eleanor, take you, Terence. 
to be my husband, to be my husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, until death shall separate us, until death shall separate us, according to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. I will treat you with respect. I will treat you with respect. I now entrust my life and my happiness to you. I now entrust my life and my happiness to you. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Dear friends, let us ask God to bless these rings that they may be symbols of the vow and covenant Eleanor and Terence have made this day. Blessed are you, God of steadfast love, source of our joy and end of our hope. Bless these rings given and received that they may be symbols of the vow and covenant Eleanor and Terence have made this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I give you this ring. Eleanor, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you in the name of God. I honor you in the name of God. Okay. Eleanor and Terence have joined themselves to each other by solemn vows signified by the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings. I declare that you are husband and wife, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Amen. Now we pray. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being. Look graciously upon the world which you have made and for which your son gave his life, and especially on all whom you make to be one flesh in marriage. May their lives together be a sacrament of your love to this broken world, so that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness heal guilt, and joy overcome despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May Eleanor and Terence so live together that the strength of their love enrich our common life and become a sign of your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May their home be a place of truth, security, and love, and their lives an example of concern for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May those who have witnessed these vows find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Bishop, if you guys go down, they'll have the cushions there for you on top. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of this man and this woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and woman. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, 
Bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you.
The prayer we offer now is a prayer asking God to accept all our offerings, and certainly beautiful music is one of those. Congratulations, Ari, on your magnificent piece, and thank you, too, of the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra for joining in and playing it for us today. Thank you. Wonderful. Please rise. God of the covenant, hear our prayer and accept all we offer you this day. You have made Eleanor and Terence one in the sacrament of marriage. May the mystery of Christ's unselfish love, which we celebrate in this Eucharist, increase their love for you and for each other through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise in the assembly of your people. You made us in your image, male and female, you created us. You give us the gift of marriage and call us to reflect your faithfulness as we serve one another in the bond of covenant love. Therefore, we raise our voices with all who have served you in every age to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread, and that life is the light of the world. 
God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the time.
invite you to stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, may Eleanor and Terence, who have been bound together in these holy mysteries, become one in heart and soul. May they live in fidelity and peace and obtain those eternal joys prepared for all who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. I'm very pleased to introduce to you Terry. Is it okay if I call you Terry? Terry and Eleanor Moore, husband and wife.
peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Stairs are that way. There is a lift in that corner if you should need help. Downstairs, everyone. Beautiful.